Okay, we're going to start today by moving around a little bit. Some of you are wearing Apple Watches that should be telling you to stand now anyway. So I'm going to say a few statements. And if the statement applies to you, I want you to stand and stay standing. I had a coach who never gave up on me and taught me persistence. I had a teacher or professor who's why I love a certain subject or chose my major. I know someone who's taught me through their own spirituality and deepened my own faith. I had a supervisor who saw potential in me and helped me land that job or that promotion. I had a friend who helped me realize I wasn't alone and I wasn't a failure as a parent. So, I'm going to read one more statement. I'm not going to read it. I'm going to say one more statement. And unless this sentence applies to you, I want you to sit down. I got here all on my own with help from nobody. That's what I thought. That coach, that teacher, that professor, that supervisor, that spiritual advisor, that friend, those are all mentors who I believe to be the best character on television, Ted Lasso, <laughs> right. he moved to London to become a football coach, or what we here across the pond call soccer. When he did that, he, shortly thereafter, he shared, you could fill two internets with what I don't know about football. You see, what made Ted Lasso a good coach isn't a knowledge about football. What made Ted Lasso a good coach was caring and investing time. I'm going to wait till the end to share with you what I believe to be the best definition of the word mentor, but we'll start with Webster. According to Webster, a mentor is defined as an experienced and trusted advisor. You see, it's not the word trusted that I have a problem with. Trust is a vital component of a mentoring relationship, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. It's the word experienced I disagree with, because like Ted Lasso, he was a great mentor, but he didn't have experience in being a mentor. Sure. Does a mentor often have more life experience or experience in a certain area than their mentee? Definitely. But what they don't usually have is experience in being a mentor. We live in a divisive world. This isn't a surprise to anybody. And mentoring is what I believe to be the relational lifeblood of our future. You see, in our personal lives, we tend to gravitate towards those who believe like we do, think like we do, vote like we do. But that's not what mentoring's about. Mentoring usually pairs people together with different thoughts, different values, different beliefs, and different opinions. At Big Brothers Big Sisters, we focus on that structured, intentional mentoring relationship. But that's not how all mentoring is. Many of you may have been in many mentoring relationships, both structured and unstructured. A structured mentoring relationship may have a defined meeting structure, goals, an intentional pairing of people together. It could have a way to measure progress, but that's not, the un that's not the unstructured version. That's the version that that's organic relationship. You could be sitting in your seat right now thinking of those people who've been mentors in your life, and you never labeled them as that. You never called them a mentor, but that's what they were. At Big Brothers Big Sisters, we try to focus on the healthy qualities of a mentoring relationship. There are four that I think are vital to a relationship. Trust, vulnerability, shared power, and shared voice. Trust is the most important aspect of any mentoring relationship. That's the piece that that definition got right. If I don't trust you, I don't open up to you. If you don't trust me, you're not going to be vulnerable in mentoring me and leading me. So that leads to vulnerability. How do we get there? How do we be that vulnerable person? What we have to understand as a mentor first is that we're expected to be vulnerable first. You can't expect anyone to be vulnerable with you if you're not first vulnerable in return. So then we get to shared power and shared voice. We all live every day with people telling us what to do, what to think, how to believe, how to dress. And a mentor is not supposed to fill that role. They may oftentimes feel the urge to step into that role and tell someone what to do, when in reality, they should step back and they should listen and they should give their mentee a voice. We try to encourage this in our mentoring relationships. Instead of saying, this is where we're going to go, say, where do you think we should go? Instead of saying, this is a skill you need to work on and you need to develop, instead say, where do you think you need to work on? What do you see as your own strengths? That's how we develop shared voice. So how do you move from shared voice into shared power? 
I was recently in a meeting where three people were given a presentation. And the person who was leading the presentation is the only one that said anything. Although I knew the other two people who were there with him were the people who prepared the presentation, who did the grunt work, who did the front work. I was disappointed in the lack of mentoring. Why were those people there? Because they didn't get to have a voice. They did all the work and someone was speaking on behalf of them instead of letting them use their voice. I was disappointed. I thought that's a pretty bad example of shared power and shared voice. So what, how do we ensure we're offering that shared power and shared voice? What does that look like? It means moving from that shared voice and instead using your power and your influence as a mentor to offer opportunity. So how do you offer a, mentor, a mentee opportunity? You hire them. You talk about them when they're not in the room in a positive way. You put them in charge of a committee and let them run it. How about this? You ask for their opinion and you actually take it. You ask thoughtful questions and you listen when they respond. You put them in charge of things. That's how you give them that opportunity. So as we look at these mentoring relationships, I hope you're thinking, how do I become a mentor? How do I become a mentee? If you're looking for a mentor, be intentional about reaching out to your networks. Tell people you're looking. Talk to your workplace. A little over two years ago when I moved here, I knew two souls from college and the board of directors that hired me. I was a little bit of that in that fake it till you make it attitude. I was a new executive director, I didn't know anybody, and this was my dream job. Was I really getting to do this? I was young, was I gonna bomb? Was I gonna fail? I believed in the power of mentoring. So shortly thereafter I was at a meeting and I said, I'm looking for a mentor. They directed me to who is now my friend and mentor, Rachel. Rachel set me and our relationship up for success. She wanted me to succeed. She put a monthly coffee catch up on our calendar and whenever either one of us had to cancel it for some reason or move it, she rescheduled it. She was consistent. She shared, she listened, she was vulnerable, she gave advice. There was no scarcity mentality in this relationship with Rachel. That's not what it was about. She still wants me to succeed. So if you're looking to be a mentor or find a mentee, how do you find a mentee if you're looking to be a mentor? So lots of workplaces are jumping on board with this idea of workplace mentoring. 71% of Fortune 500 companies now have mentoring programs in place. Of those, 97% of those mentees say their mentor is a valuable asset to them. 97, that's a huge number. So if you're looking for that, you don't have that at your workplace, be a part of starting it. Do the research. Tell your leadership at work that this is something you're interested in and that will help you succeed. If you're looking to mentor youth in Chattanooga, I definitely can't stand up here and tell, not tell you about the need and impact of mentors at Big Brothers Big Sisters. So I told you that at the end I would share with you what I believe to be the best definition of the word mentor. I don't think anybody's ever defined it as clearly or as eloquently as the great Maya Angelou. Maya Angelou says, in order to be a mentor and an effective one, one must care. You must care. You don't have to know how many square miles are in Idaho or what the chemical makeup of chemistry is or blood or water. Know what you know and care about the person. Care about what you know and care about the person you're sharing it with. So just like Ted Lasso, a mentor must care. You're not expected to be the expert. So with that, who are you leading? Thank you. Thank you.